Speaking of Biden, yesterday on his 81st birthday, the White House press secretary said that she would put his stamina up against anyone. Yes, she said Biden has a lot of stamina. Unfortunately, stamina is the new line of nutrition shakes from Insure. <laughs> he has a lot of stamina. Three or four a day. Ah, yes. Mr. Stamina. I don't know why I'm thinking about uh, Joe Biden. A little blue pill. I don't, I don't know why. I'm, I don't know why that occurred to me there, but, but I thought of cringe. Cringe makes us cringe. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And that's a good thing. You know, depending on your family. If you're Ruth Marcus at the Washington Post, apparently not a good thing. A troubling split at my Thanksgiving table. And the nations. The uh, left wing, was she like, she's got, she went to all the poison ivy, didn't she? She went to Harvard and Yale, Yale and Harvard. Which means she's wrong about everything, uh, pretty reliably. Our Thanksgiving table has never been a political battleground. Not until this year. We made it through some difficult chapters. The war in Iraq, for one, and escaped others. No crazy uncle defending the Trump administration. Only left-wing Democrat radicals and now genocidal self-loathing Jews at the dinner table. This year is different. We are a Jewish family. So you might think the horror of the Hamas attack would bring us together. Anything but. Instead, in the interests of family harmony, the Thanksgiving table has been preemptively declared an Israel-free zone. Pass the corn pudding and drop the ceasefire talk. Tell Grandma not to discuss settlements. That actually happened to me a few weeks ago. I talked about it here at a uh, dinner table at a home, a multi-million dollar home, uh, nearby Chevy Chase, Maryland, with a, um, not everybody at the table was Jewish, but uh, the one person who was really upset, Jewish, and I'm uh, very much on the side of Israel, and not everybody is. And that dinner table conversation honestly didn't go very well, quite surprisingly. I suspect we're not alone, Ruth Marcus types on behalf of the radical left. The October 7th attack exposed many painful realities, did it? Including the prevalence of anti-Semitism in our own country which had been lurking just beneath the surface at your two alma maters, Harvard and Yale, for years. Because you guys are teaching this critical race theory, and you're teaching diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? And you're teaching boycott, divest, and sanction. That's the anti-Israel movement that the left has been teaching on college campuses for years, and it's really gotten a lot of traction. And now we've learned, because they're pro-Hamas and they're pro-Osama bin Laden and they're young, white, self-described liberals from all the best colleges in America, and they're violent and they're mentally ill, and it's because they've been taught to be violent and mentally ill by the millions. And you know by whom, Ruth Marcus? by Harvard and Yale and the University of Pennsylvania and the University of California and uh, the University of Maryland, where they, what do they have, Holocaust 2.0 uh, on the sidewalk at the University of Maryland? Sure. A related one is the generational divide, broadly for sure, but also within the American Jewish community over support for Israel and the importance of Israel as a Jewish homeland. I'm all in with that, but uh, these lefties are genocidal, pro-jihad nutcases. This is a multi-generational schism, she types. The younger you are, the less supportive of Israel. It predates the current war, but has been both exposed and widened by it. Well, this is, the, you know, uh, you're, you're a hardcore Democrat, Ruth Marcus, and this is what you're teaching. This is... This is the left. You're pro-terror. You're pro-genocide. You're pro-murder. And Adolf Hitler's party was a socialist workers' party in Europe in the mid-20th century. Sure. Really, really, really. You guys, I'm telling you. So, uh, good thing we're not having dinner with Ruth Ruth Marcus uh, tomorrow. (laughs) That's a good thing, I think. Really, nobody wants to eat with Ruth, Ruth Marcus. 
That's one of the problems, probably at her Thanksgiving dinner table. And USA Today with the headline, How to Avoid Talking Politics at Thanksgiving. Consider a no MAGA allowed sign. Consider shoving it. How about that? Let's start the political conversation then. Politics has never been a good subject for a family gathering, but in the age of Trump, they want to blame Trump. Trump got three peace deals in the Middle East with Israel and Arab countries. Trump has a community in Israel named for him. Trump's daughter convert, converted to Judaism when she married a Jewish man. Trump's daughter is raising their children as conservative Jews. And Trump is the problem. Uh, you know, no MAGA, because in the age of Trump, you know, that's because you guys and Trump derangement syndrome and you're mentally ill on so many different levels at this point that I really, sincerely, since tomorrow's Thanksgiving, I, uh, a, a serious moment, you need help. You need to seek help. You're not well. You're not normal. This is not normal. At the Chris Plant store, we have T-shirts and coffee mugs that say, Remember Normal. You guys have forgotten normal. I know you hate Trump. He says things you don't like. Calm down. Politics is not supposed to be a daily part of your lives anyway. Just pull your heads out of your dark and remote locations. But in the age of Trump, it has become more explosive than your drunk uncle. They love this whole idea of the drunk uncle. I, they, say they can't stop talking about this. You guys are obviously the drunk uncles in this conversation, can I just say? Adding just a bit more oil to the turkey fryer. Honestly. It's almost Thanksgiving, that special day of the year when most Americans are forced to spend time with the relatives they don't like. What is the matter with you people? You know what? I, I like my relatives. I like my family. I, I like uh, my sisters-in-law, my brothers. One brother is a little difficult sometimes. Uh, and, uh, you know, get over yourselves. Find medication. You're not well. Americans are forced to spend time with the relatives they don't like in return for large amounts of food they do like. This is USA Today. You guys are, you, you, need, you need help, honestly. And the, uh, and here they are, the cousin Melvin. The, they're going on about this stupidity. I guess I'm, maybe I'm just very fortunate. Maybe my family is pretty normal in the scheme of things. And uh, the crazy uncle and, and all this. So you, you should put a sign up saying no mega. How about no genocidal leftist anti-Semite warmongering, looting, uh, window smashing, cop car burning, anti-American, anti-capitalist, pro turning kindergartners into LGBTQ subjects of sexual abuse. Now, you know, are they inviting the, the mayor of uh, College Park over? Oh, he was just sentenced to 30 years in prison. The friend of Pete Boot Edge Edge and visitor to the Biden White House with the gay child porn conviction. Should we talk about that? Should we talk about H Street shutting down and all the immigrants having their businesses smashed and looted by Democrats who are apparently criminals? Should we talk about the carjackings and you defunding police? Take your no MAGA sign and uh, roll it up, roll it up very neatly, and then what? And then what should you do with it? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think you know the rest. And you know where to put the cork, as the who famously <laughs> sang. <laughs> Amazing stuff. You guys. Now, what are the 10 things that, that, according to the polls, people don't want to talk about at the Thanksgiving dinner table? My Thanksgiving dinner table is going to be just fine because... There aren't any crazy people, you know, Biden supporting looters and mental cases. But uh, of the things that people do not want to talk about at the Thanksgiving dinner table, and there are many, the, uh, and I, I love that the pollsters from pre-ply, pre-ply, took a big poll of 1,046 Americans, asked, what do you not want to talk about at the Thanksgiving dinner table? And it's like a top 10 countdown. Number 10, don't want to talk about. Conspiracy theories. 
Oh, like uh, the Hillary Clinton dossier and Russian collusion? and uh, Is that uh, what I, How about uh, John F. Kennedy? Still haven't released conspiracy theories. Number nine, war. Well, that covers a lot of ground. Has anybody called for a ceasefire in Ukraine? I think just as a prank, everybody should call for a ceasefire at the dinner table. In Ukraine, which not a single Democrat is called. They're out marching in the streets, smashing windows, burning police cars, demanding that Israel stop defending themselves. But no call for a ceasefire in Ukraine, where the Biden family has uh, taken in millions of dollars, millions of dollars from Ukraine, taken in millions of dollars from China. Pay no attention. So no talk of war. That's okay. Personal finances. Isn't that normal protocol? You don't talk about personal finances at the Thanksgiving dinner table? Hey, uh, anybody, you can help me out. Father, can you help me out? I was an altar boy. Personal finances. Said, everybody give me 20 bucks. Jobs. You know, nobody should talk about their jobs. Number six, personal relationships. What, what are you going to talk about, honestly? Number five, COVID. <laughs> You mean uh, the communist disease from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, partially funded by Anthony Fauci's tax dollars? Well, you know, our tax dollars by way of Anthony Fauci. Shouldn't talk about that. And no accountability. Sure, we shouldn't talk about that. And the lockdowns and the shutdowns and the children. And uh, how about the vaccines? Should we talk about that? Hey, how's your myocarditis, Uncle Saul? (laughs) Don't forget to get your booster shot. What does it boost? It boosts your myocarditis. Pay no attention to that. Number four, no talk of Biden. That's what it says. (laughs) Uh, Number three, family drama and gossip. Really, is there anything left? You're just going to sit there in silence and eat your mashed potatoes. Number two, see, number four things not to talk about is Biden. Number two, guess what? Trump. No talk of Trump. And number one, drum roll, please. Things not to talk about at the Thanksgiving dinner table, the 2024 election. That's what the poll says from pre-ply, 1,046 Americans. And those are the things you don't want to talk about. I guess you'd talk about football. You know, there's football on Thanksgiving. You talk about, see, the thing is at my dinner table, yeah, you can talk about pretty much all these things. You know, it's tacky to talk about uh, personal finances. If your job is happy, then it's a good thing. Personal relationships, uh, talk about those if they're happy relationships, like normal people. All right? COVID. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to bring some uh, syringe kits and uh, offer people booster shots at the. Of course, I'm not because no crazy people. But if you got a lot of Democrats at the table, it can be a problem. You know. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You're a Democrat party. There they are. Hey, anybody here a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation calling for a death to Israel from river to the sea? (laughs) Okay, good. No Democrats at the table. Hey, why do Democrats want to wipe the state of Israel off the face of the earth? That'd be a good conversation starter with liberals. (laughs) When did you guys become such anti-Semites, genocidal anti-Semites? Kill, 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 kill. All right, so let's, uh, we've got, we've still got much more to get to as well. <laughs> but that's pretty funny stuff, the news media and uh, Thanksgiving. You know, they're maladjusted, malevolent miscreants. Am I right? They're not well-adjusted to the world in which we live. And they, here's what I've discovered about people on the left. I discovered this a long time ago, but I don't talk about it a lot. They don't like people. How else do you murder 100 million people in 100 years? you got to start out by not liking people. Hey, as we've just been discussing, the holidays are here. Yes, they are. And the jolly old elves at Omaha Steaks have you covered, you know, with your wish list, guaranteed perfection. During their Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, you can go do it today, too. Go to omahasteaks.com. That's on Al Gore's Amazing Internet. Take advantage of the 50% off sale site-wide, and then when you use the promo code PLANT, that's me, at checkout, you're going to save an additional 30 American dollars off your order. Omaha Steaks make great gifts. You're going to be the hero of the dinner table when you give Omaha Steaks as a gift. Score your 
delicious deals on tender, juicy, extra-aged steaks like their mouth-watering bacon-wrapped filet mignons. You know, get to warm up with meals, carefully curated gift packages guaranteed to make spirits bright all winter long. With Omaha Steaks, the possibilities are endless. Endless flavor, endless value, but move fast because Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals at Omaha Steaks are going to be gone before you know it. That's omahasteaks.com. The promo code is plant at checkout. A minimum order may be required. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I haven't even got to Israel and the hostage exchange. Really, that's coming up still. And uh, Joe Biden, not a smart man. Not a smart man. Also, I got a college professors. Why, 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 where are all these anti-Semites come from on college campuses? And they've been brainwashing the little snowflakes to be genocidal killers. That's coming up. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. I, uh, let's grab a phone call, please. Haven't uh, taken a, a call from the nice people in some time. Let's go to Wayne, calling from Washington, D.C., which is amazingly our nation's capital. Hey, Wayne. <laughs> it used to be. Uh, so we have a carjacking yesterday in my neighborhood at the intersection of Whitehaven Parkway and Fox Hall Road. Uh, on one corner is George Washington University, and uh, on the other corner is the German Embassy, uh, completely protected with Uniform Secret Service. And I, I thought to myself, you know, these folks, they were either carjacked at gunpoint with a real gun, or a fake gun that looks like a real gun, but they had their car stolen, but they got it back because there was an air tag in it. But I grew up in that neighborhood. That stuff doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, it does now. But another example of the failed Bowser administration and city council, because they're not worried about this anymore. They would, oh, why did you shoot that 13-year-old that tried to carjack a, a police officer in front of the courthouse downtown? Right. No, 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 no. We now, instead of having $750,000 to repurpose old tennis courts for pickleball courts over in Northeast and Southeast where nobody's going to play it anyway because they're too busy playing dodge bullet, they want to build a go-go museum now. <laughs> why don't you direct that money toward education and jobs? and things like that to keep these young kids from getting themselves in trouble. More than 800 carjackings in D.C. this year. So far, we are 61 square miles. I, um, you know, there's war going on in uh, Israel because the troglodytes from hell attacked and butchered people and kidnapped people, and they're holding hostages and all that stuff. And, and um, in in Washington, D.C., uh, we have, you know, the White House, and we used to have the Obama administration. You may recall it. Now Barack Obama lives in a 14 or $15 million oceanfront property in Martha's Vineyard, and he's got his $15 million property in Hawaii that nobody's paying attention to, but they tore down, Obama tore down the Magnum P.I. house, Robin's Nest, and um, he's building some uh, monster of a thing there, and violating the law, putting up uh, sea breaks and things like that, but that's okay. And he's got an 8 or $10 million house off of uh, Embassy Row in the shadow of the main mosque in Washington, D.C. Now, Barack Obama is corrupt, and we know that, and he hates Joe Biden, so he's not all bad. Um, but a story broke yesterday. Ex-Obama advisor says killing 4,000 Palestinian children, quote, wasn't enough Stuart Seldowitz, who worked in the National Security Council, he was the South Asia uh, Directorate Chieftain under President Barack Obama, and uh, video emerged because this guy, a Democrat, a self-described liberal, and now a lobbyist and a, a senior government official on a number of occasions, um, he was in New York City, and he decided to go up to, there's a food truck vendor 
who is a Muslim man from another country, an immigrant to the United States, trying to make his way in the world and in New York City. And he's and he's working hard. And here comes this Obama administration official up to his food truck and starts shouting him down and yelling stuff at him and getting his historical facts wrong and things. Uh, and now he's been working as a lobbyist for years now, apparently not doing anything uh, because the lobbying group, the Gotham Government Relations, you know, from Batman, they hired him and were paying him trillions of dollars to represent people. But listen to this because videos surfaced. A Columbia University student made videos posted on X because he happened upon Stuart Seldowitz being nasty to a an immigrant man, a Muslim man, food truck vendor in New York City, and uh, saying, you know, 4,000 dead Palestinians. He doesn't know if the guy's Palestinian. He could be Egyptian. He could be who knows what. But uh, here comes... Obama administration official, and this is key, Obama administration official Stuart Seldowitz, Seldowitz from the Obama White House National Security Council harassing a food truck vendor in New York City. You're a terrorist. You support terrorism. Listen, go. I'm not supporting support something. You, do. you support terrorism. You're a terrible person. You kill children, not me. What? Go. My kids? What about my kids? You killed children, not me. Go. I didn't kill children. Okay, why see here? You know why? If we killed 4,000 Palestinian kids, you know what? It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Go, go. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. If we killed 4,000 Palestinian children, it wasn't enough, says Obama administration. And he's a National Security Council. And he worked in the State Department also. And then he starts going after him. And he gets this all wrong. Um about the Prophet Muhammad, who did marry a little girl named Aisha. But uh, Stuart Seldowitz thinks that that it was Muhammad's, the Prophet Muhammad's daughter uh, and that he's uh, incestuous and having sex with his daughter Aisha when in reality it was just his six- or seven-year-old bride who he, you know, left alone until she was nine. But here is uh, a Democrat White House national security official, Obama official, Stuart Seldowitz. What? Go. No, no. Muhammad was a child molester. Go. It says in the Hadith. Do you read the Hadith? Go. Do you I'm read the Hadith? Call, I'm Had, the hadith. hadith. How old was Aisha when, when Muhammad married her? It's not her? your business. Go. No, I'm asking you. Six or Go. seven. She was six. And then she, he tried to have sex with her when she was nine. And her hair fell out. It says that in your own holy book. And her, fell, her hair fell out, which is an, an unpleasant thing. So here's uh, the, uh, honestly, this guy was a State Department official. He uh, was an Obama administration national security official, think, getting a little emotional, I think. And this, uh, you know, Washington, D.C. is full of people from all over the world, of course, as you might expect, doing all kinds of things from, you know, b- big important government jobs to uh, street vendors. And uh, I'm not uh, big on harassing, <laughs> you know, some poor guy trying to be a, a food cart vendor. Uh, he's not responsible for a whole lot, but... Are you here legally? No. <laughs> Why should I go? It's a free country. It's not Egypt here. Now, I guess he thinks he's from Egypt. And so, yeah, he was a director for the National Security Council, South Asia directorate, you know, like Pakistan and Afghanistan and India and so on. And uh, under Obama and deputy director, senior political officer, sounds very Soviet, at the State Department's office on Israel and Palestine. I don't think he's a very good diplomat. That's I've got to say. But he's been found out, and he was working for the Gotham government relations lobbying firm who put out a statement yesterday, and this made me laugh too. Gotham government relations has ended all affiliation with Stuart Seldowitz, an individual who hasn't contributed to our work in years. Really? How much has he been making? Yeah. You know the Mukhabarat? Hmm? The Mukhabarat. No, I don't know. The Egyptian. Just speak English. No? Yeah, I, I go, don't speak go. English. Kamarad in, in Egypt will get your parents. Go, go, go. Does yeah. your father like his fingernails? They'll, they'll take them out one by one. Yalla, rukh me in. Yalla, go, go, go. Why should I go? Why should I go? Well, because, you know, you're a, a pain in the rumpus. And, you know, leave the guy alone. He's trying to make a living. Doing the best he can. Trying to make a living and I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, so Gotham government relations, they've severed all relations. They say, 
He hasn't contributed to our work in years. What does that job pay? Because <laughs> video of his actions is vile, racist, and beneath the dignity of the standards we practice at our firm. They said it's a lobbying firm. Sure. All right, well, heck of a job. You know, but uh, that's not a news story. Now, if it were a Trump administration official, it would be a big news story. You see how journalism works now. That's very important to keep these things in mind. It certainly is. You bet your bottom dollar. Uh, speaking of the uh, Biden administration, they're... Uh, Oh, and also New York is now on heightened alert They're, uh, for a radical Islamic jihadi terrorist attack on New York City, what with everything going on in the world. And so the governor there, Hochul, is uh, warning, alert, alert, warning, warning. Will Robinson returned to the ship. But an Air Force base in North Dakota is warning airmen not to attend a rally featuring turning point actions, Tyler Boyer, or risk jeopardizing their military career. Now, wait a Turning Point is a, a, a patriotic organization, but service member station at Minot Air Force Base at North Dakota received a text message ahead of November 17th, Dakota Patriot Rally, warning them that attending something called a Patriot Rally, you know how the uh, Obama-Biden administration used the IRS to target all groups with the word patriot in their title, and Tea Party. And the IRS was forced to pay millions of dollars in damages because they're so filthy corrupt, but nobody went to a penitentiary, which is all wrong, just completely wrong. So the leadership at the base uh, took issue with the event and uh, went to Tyler Bowyer, B-O-W-Y-U-R, of Turning Point, you know, Turning Point USA, Turning Point Action, they deemed it an alt-right group uh, because they're pro-American, and that's uh, the Biden military. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, also, did you see that the Biden administration has ordered our border stories to uh, check on the pronouns and to not misgender illegal aliens crossing our border because they're all mentally ill? DHS chief. Mayorkas orders agents not to misgender illegal border crossers. You know, offensive that could be, you know, to MS-13 members smuggling fentanyl into the country that will kill dozens of Americans. It'll kill hundreds of thousands over the course of the Biden administration. Joe Biden's border chief, Alejandro Mayorkas, is now ordering agents not to use incorrect pronouns so that they don't misgender illegal aliens illegally crossing our border as they come into our country illegally. The oversight project at the Heritage, Heritage Foundation, doing excellent work over there these days, we just obtained Customs and Border Patrol Agency documents directing personnel to only use woke language when encountering individuals invading the United States. A tweet from the oversight project at Heritage Foundation reads, and they have the document, the actual DHS document that has been provided to our border people, instructing them to, you know, be real careful. Otherwise, you're going to be in big trouble. Do not use he, him, she, her pronouns until you have more information about or are provided information by the individual. Do not use Mr., Mrs., Ms., Sir, or Ma'am. Do not use those salutations, you see, until you have uh, more information about the individual. Sure. Refer to being LGBTQ plus as a choice or a lifestyle. Do not refer to LGB. These are things you must not do. Don't say to the illegal alien violating our laws, smuggling uh, children in that are not their own. Do not suggest that being LGBTQ or even plus as a choice or a lifestyle. Do not use stereotype or offensive language or incorrect terms to describe LGBTQ plus persons. Do not make jokes about an individual's sexual orientation or gender identity. This is what our government is focused on because Democrats are in charge. And I think all of them are mentally ill. 
The DHS uh, may, uh, the, the leaders may go get jobs at Target after uh, their government service is done. Do not label LGBTQ plus people based on how they look or sound before you know how they identify. Even if the LGBTQ plus person appears to, uh, you know, sit a, fit a, a, a certain pro, like it's a man uh, dressed as a woman or something. You've got to be culturally sensitive. And they're um, in danger of, you know, having their careers ended because you don't want to misgender someone crossing illegally into the United States of America. That's an amazing story. And the Heritage Foundation found it, not the New York Times, not the Washington Post, not CNN, not 60 Minutes, the Heritage Foundation. Speaking of illegals crossing into our country uh, and uh, the Prophet Muhammad and his child bride, Aisha, a Brazilian child rapist arrested in Martha's Vineyard, Martha's Vineyard by ICE, who the Democrats want to defund because they're pro-criminal. But this Brazilian child rapist escaped the law. You know, I've, I've told you about the stories. The Brazilian that was arrested, where was he? New Hampshire, working at somebody's house, who escaped jail in Brazil. He had been convicted of murdering 11 people, a massacre. He was part of a police massacre of 11 people. He was sentenced to more than 275 years in prison. And he escaped prison in um, Brazil, came to the United States, was working a job in Brazil. And that's all fine. Uh, now we've got this child rapist. He raped a five-year-old in Brazil. He was sentenced to prison, and somehow he escaped. And now he's in the United States, and he was arrested by ICE on Martha's Vineyard. It's kind of the perfect place for him, don't you think? I think so. All right, I, I, I feel like such a goof. I have uh, mailbag day, and I just get carried away with all the news of the day. I have mailbag questions coming right up before... You know, uh, people start to head off for Thanksgiving. That's coming up. And a gift, a nice gift in a box that I got from a wonderful listener. That's coming up. All right. I uh, I tell you, one of our mailbag things should be the tweet we got from the Air Marshals National Council. We did a segment on that yesterday targeting Americans for being in Washington on January 6, 2001, and following people. Very Soviet, very creepy. Chris Plant Show, it's true, they wrote from the Air Marshal National Council. It's true, we've been working with Congress since TSA Administrator Pekoski started the dubious program, a uh, creepy Stasi-like program. Good to see we're finally getting traction, and I'd like to return to it too. The weaponization of the federal air marshal system must stop Pekoski and Mayorkas need to be held accountable. If only we had a news media. Congress has a lot to do. Uh, now, mailbag. I got a wonderful package the other day from, from Cindy, Cindy and Lyle. Cindy and Lyle in Bluffton, South Carolina. Just uh, wonderful. Bluffton, South Carolina, Hilton Head. And they, uh, they sent me a wonderful, it's a wooden box. And it contains, I believe, four large cigars. And it's still in the original plastic wrapper. has the seal on it. It's never been opened. It's got the wooden box with the slide open. Very nice. And it is a, a collection, a selection of the Lewinsky Presidential Cigars. Lewinsky Presidential Cigars. The Big Hummer. And so they call the cigars the Big Hummer. They're uh, handmade in Santiago, Dominican Republic. And they're, these are a treasure. These are a great political treasure. They really are, and they're fun. And as you may know, I know Monica Lewinsky. I gave Monica Lewinsky a ride home from uh, the Pentagon. One I used to see Monica Lewinsky around a lot. It was never her fault. But a uh, great gift, wonderful <laughs> mailbag item. Cindy and Lyle, I don't use last names without prior approval, in uh, Bluffton, South Carolina. Wonderful. I will uh, treasure this. I'm not going to open and smoke. I'm going to Keep it as a great political, uh, a bit of political memorabilia from my personal past as well. And let's go to uh, River Queen for the mailbag. If you could choose where 
Springsteen, Madonna, and Babs Streisand should be airlifted to at taxpayer expense. Where would you love to see them living out their miserable lives? Well, that's a great question, River Queen. And Michael and I talked about this a little bit this morning, and it's kind of funny because we both came immediately to the same conclusion. The Gaza Strip. Obviously, the Gaza Strip. You know, uh, Barbara Streisand said she was going to leave the country if Donald Trump were reelected. I think the Gaza Strip is the perfect place for her and her fellow travelers. That is easy. And Springsteen and Madonna, <laughs> Gaza Strip. It's the Gaza for all of you. Maybe they could tell their friends on their satellite phones how, how great it is to be there. Corey. <laughs> Corey who is Vince Colladesa's producer on WMAL and weekend radio host, Corey, is great. Bud Light used to be your go-to beer. What is it now and why? Well, let me plug my friends again at Ultra Right, Ultra Right Beer. We're going to post a picture, I think Michael is, on social media, of my Ultra Right Beer. It's wonderful uh, because my friends in Georgia are making it, and the cans are great, and the beer is very, very good, and it's a really good replacement for my Bud Light, and I still haven't had a Bud Light since. And I've been drinking Kona Longboard. Kona Longboard. I like Kona. I'm drinking a lot of different beers now, but I I latched on to Kona Longboard a little bit, and it's really good stuff. Shrike asks, when your father was overseas fighting the Nazis, how did he celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, as you may know, he died when I was very young. I didn't get a chance to ask him that, but I'm guessing you used to hear a lot about SOS. You know, that's cream chip beef on toast, something on a shingle, Navy chow, and then back to killing Nazis, because that's what you did on Thanksgiving in World War II. Am I right? And Public Library Madness asks, do you prefer cranberry sauce in a can or cranberry sauce to be more natural state in appearance? I definitely like the more natural state in appearance, as close to their raw berries as possible. (laughs) 